These are pieces of gear which initially may not excite you, like a new camera, lens or banana, but they will make filming and especially post-production so much easier. And who doesn't want that? Now some of these are new products and some are not. But I use a combination of them in every single video that I make and every shoot that I go on. These are used in the highest level of film production right down to one man band shoots because they are that useful. And with them, I can have all these cameras and more on a shoot and have identical time code right down to the frame. And with these, I can record audio separately, but also have matching time code, frame accurate, and not have to worry about levels either. Again, who wouldn't want that? And despite my last video, which if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, I'm still doing this video in the Catio despite the planes. You'd have thought I'd have learned by now. I literally have 45 seconds between planes and probably less than that if you count the actual usable part of the sound. But at least with these cameras I have cutaways and with the time code it's going to make editing around it so much easier. Let's make it less frustrating though. I've got this table up high so you could see the gear nice and easily and not have to have too wide a shot, but it does make me look like um, a bit of a child. Ah, doesn't matter. It's, it's practical. And that's what this video is about. Practical stuff. Maybe not the most exciting stuff, but practical. Using timecode is by far the easiest way to sync your cameras and audio so they are the same and it makes editing them an absolute breeze. Look, I can hear you say, I can just do a sync clap or slate it and then sync to that. Yes, that's true and that works fine as long as your cameras and audio are continually recording because if you stop or start one of your devices, there goes your sync. If your time code is synced, then you can stop and start as much as you want, although your shots won't be very good. These are very good, by the way, these little remote controllers for Sony cameras. If you've got a proper video camera, cinema camera, most of them have a timecode in and out connector. Not all of them, but most of them. But unfortunately, I can count on just one hand the mirrorless cameras that have this ability. And they're all made by Panasonic. The first being the GH5S in January 2018. And they use the Flash Synchro port for that. For years, Panasonic have been way ahead of the competition when giving their mirrorless cameras proper professional video functionality. Not all of them, but most of them. This year we finally have time code in and out from two other brands, Canon and Sony with the R5 Senior FX3. Whilst they're called cinema cameras, they are still very much mirrorless cameras at their core. The R5C has a dedicated connector on the body, whilst the FX3 has just added its function by firmware. But you do need a $170 adapter that plugs into the multi-USB port. It's great that they've added it, but not super elegant, and it is using the worst port on the camera, but at least it has it now. Pretty much every mirrorless camera that I own has the ability to set time code manually, which is something and important. You generally have two options, time code, rec run, record run, or free run. With rec run, your time code stops and starts with each clip, and with free run, it's continuous regardless of whether you are recording or not. You use free run when you're going to be syncing time code across cameras, audio recorders. But even when I'm not, I do normally set my camera to time of day as it's very useful for finding shots and for making notes. That finally brings us on to these little things. Now, time code generators, sync devices that can be used with any camera as long as it has at least a microphone input. This is the Tentacle Sync, and this is the Deity TC1, which has just come out. You've probably already worked out that I've got three cameras filming me. I'm using a Sony FX6 as my main camera with a timecode port, and two mirrorless Sonys, the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 7S 3 which do not. This audio you're hearing is on the Tentacle Track E body recorder, which gets its timecode from the same app. I've also got the camera mic, and also a couple of these, which are Insta mics. They're waterproof wearable mics that are also compatible with Tentacle Sync. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself and making it a little bit too complicated. 
The FX6 has timecode in and out, but I can choose whether to use the camera's free run timecode as the master device, or I can use one of my tentacle syncs in that role. In the app, I select the tentacle sync that I have connected to the FX6 and set the timecode I want to start with. And also very importantly, the frame rate, which is 25p. The FX6 will update the timecode and show it is receiving it from an external source. Different cameras need different cables to connect the tentacle sync or TC1 to the camera. The most common one for video cameras is the 3.5 millimeter jack to BNC. Once the camera has read the external timecode, I have two options to unplug the tentacle sync and use it on another camera or leave it plugged in. I very much recommend always leaving your timecode generator connected to your camera as this does minimize any chance of any timecode drift, which can happen depending on the camera, especially if the camera is turned off at some point or you're on long shoot days. If you don't have enough of them, then sure, go ahead and disconnect it. The time code is now set, so it will remain, but I would definitely recommend every couple of hours reconnecting just to make sure that is all spot on. And it takes a few seconds. With the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K here, I'm just plugging in the tentacle sync or TC1 into the 3.5 millimeter mic input. And it takes that signal and reads the timecode, writing it into the metadata of your clips. Again, I would always recommend leaving it plugged in. If you really need to use that 3.5 millimeter mic input, then you can remove the timecode generator and hope it doesn't drift. I would just reconnect it every two or three hours, just in case. The way the Blackmagics can read timecode from the 3.5 millimeter mic input is different to how we use these with mirrorless cameras. When you plug them into a microphone input, you'll hear an audio timecode signal. The audio timecode is on the left channel and the scratch microphone, which is on each of these devices, will be on the right hand channel. This is very useful because when you plug in a microphone into that input, it overrides the internal mics and it also takes up your only mic input. They aren't the greatest of microphones, but that's why they're called scratch audio mics. I will show you what we do with this audio timecode in post in a bit. But first, I want to share with you some ways around this loss of the mic input. If you're using a Sony mirrorless, you can't use uh, mics like the ECM B1M or almost anything that uses the multi interface shoot, as that disables the 3.5 millimeter mic input of the camera. But if you have the XLR K3M with one of the newer cameras that has the four channel XAVCI codec, then you can plug the time code into the 3.5 millimeter input on that, not the camera one. The time code will then be recorded like if you plugged it into the camera with the left-hand channel having that audio time code. If you are just using the 3.5 millimeter input, which most people will be, then you can get a stereo splitter cable. Here I've plugged in my Daisy D3 Pro into the right channel of the cable and the tentacle into the left channel. You can't set the left and right channels levels independently in the camera, but with the D3 Pro, you can adjust it on the mic itself. Of course, when you're using headphones, you are gonna hear that left channel. So I use another stereo splitter and plug my headphones into the right channel so I can only hear the microphone. A microphone on a camera should never be your main audio, really. So that brings us to this, the Tentacle Track E 32-bit float audio recorder that works from the same app and syncs to the Tentacle Syncs. It's a mono input only, and it's designed to be used as a body recorder, but you aren't limited to that. The audio isn't sent to the camera, of course, not a radio mic. It's synced in post with a timecode. But if you want the audio in your camera too, then you can plug a wireless mic transmitter into your headphone output of the trackie and send that to your camera via a receiver on the camera and plug that into your right hand channel if you really want that you can monitor the audio of the trackie on the app there's a heavy lag and you know it's not designed for proper monitoring it's just to check that it is working if you've never used 32-bit floats and you don't know what you're missing you don't have to get your record levels spot on because you can bring it into post and if it's too quiet you can just bring it up and you won't hear any noise if it's too loud even over modulating you think it is it doesn't matter because again you can bring it down and there is no loss in quality 
No cameras I know of currently use this 32 bit float, and there aren't that many audio recorders either. On the more budget end of the scale, there's the Zoom F2BT, which, like the Tentacle Track E, is another body recorder. And there's the Zoom F3, which is a two input XLR recorder and is very nice indeed. Next in price is the Tentacle Track E. And the last one I have is the Zoom F6, the superb six input audio recorder. Now, the F6 has a dedicated in and out timecode port, which is wonderful. The other two zooms do support timecode, but sadly not with the Tentacle Sync or the TC1. They can only sync via the UltraSync Blue device, which itself can only sync via Bluetooth. There are no physical connections on it, sadly, to get timecode from another source. The only way to do that is to get another device from them, like the UltraSync one, which has two BNC connections to send and receive timecode. My favorite microphone recorder isn't 32 bit flight, it's this Zoom HD VR, but it does support timecode with the UltraSync Blue, but only if you buy the little Bluetooth dongle, which uh, just goes in there, otherwise it won't. I may as well use this flight path break productively and thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If for some reason you don't already know, Skillshare is an online community with thousands of diverse classes covering all sorts of subjects, mostly creative, which of course is perfect for me. What's really got me excited this month has been reconnecting with music. I'm a very mediocre guitar and piano player and there are great courses for both. It was actually an email from Skillshare that made me aware of this fantastic course by Elijah Fox Peck. Now that we've learned how to identify all of the names of the notes of the piano, we're going to look at a major chord. The thing is, my keyboard is rubbish, so I really do need to pick myself up something better. But there's so much choice, though. How about this one? I wonder if it'll fit in my Catio. There's a link in the description for one month free trial for the first 1,000 people. So give it a try yourself. Oh, I've got a gap between the planes. Now you can, in theory, use Tentacle Syncs and the TC1s together. I mean, sort of, it's what I'm doing right now. I would recommend, though, just using one system, but it is possible. What I've done here is to use one of my Tentacle Syncs as a master device and set one of the TC1s to receive the timecode from it. Once I've done that, I sync the other TC1s together and yeah, I have matching timecode and hopefully, it will stick. I mean, I'll find out in post, but it should stick. The TC1 has two big pluses over the Tentacle Sync. First, in the locking connector, and the second is the ability to set everything on it without needing an app, thanks to the little screen on it with full control. Both systems use a hook and loop fastening system on the back to attach to your camera or audio recorders. The TC1s come with a cold shoe attachment, which stick to that. The tentacles don't, but you can buy all sorts of different mounting solutions for them. There's a number of advantages to the tentacle sync system. The first is the Track E recorder, because currently there are no audio recorders from Deity that work in this ecosystem, but I'm sure that will change at some point. A nice additional ability is using them with the Instamics. This isn't a new feature. They are tiny waterproof mono or stereo microphones that you wear on a person. And these can get timecode from the Tentacle Sync via their app. It will also set them to the appropriate frame rate. And you can use them as Bluetooth microphones for your phone and even work for Instagram and Facebook Lives. I've actually had mine for about five years now. There is a newer model that sounds better from what I've heard and it also records in 32-bit float. I really must get one of those. The other one is this app here from Tentacle, it's called Time Bar. And this gives you a, a slate which you can flash to cameras whilst recording so to get a reference time code and you can change that to match it in post. Very useful if you run out of Tentacle Syncs and especially for cameras with no ability to even take the audio time code, like drones. If you start recording on your drone and show this to it before heading off, then yeah, you can change it in your NLE. 
Now, of course, if you start a new clip in the air, that will screw things up. So it's best to keep rolling the whole time. But if you have stopped and started a new clip, as long as you get back to the ground before stopping that recording, you can show this to the drone and change the time code at that point in your NLE. It's not ideal. And I would love to see DJI collaborate with Tentacle to get the DJI fly up to talk to the Tentacle Sync Cam. There's a really cool additional thing to the Timebot app for GoPros. Make sure you have installed the GoPro Labs firmware, otherwise it won't work. So in the Timebot app, you bring up the QR code and just show it to the camera. It will see it, change the time code to be in sync with the tentacles and also set your frame rate to the matching one. Data actually do make a really nice proper slate that works with the TC1. It's quite expensive, but if slates are really important to you on jobs, then maybe take a look at that. You can use up to 10 different tentacle devices together, including the Tracky, and the TC1 supports up to 20. Battery life is about 28 hours on the TC1 and about 40 hours on the tentacle sync. So what do we do with all our footage and audio? If you're not dealing with any audio time code, like we have to with the mirrorless cameras, then you can just sync it all up really easily directly in the LLE. If you have audio timecode on your clips, then with DaVinci Resolve, you can really easily just tell it to take that audio timecode and use it for the timecode metadata. It's not that easy to sync up lots of clips in DaVinci Resolve, and that's why my favorite way of doing things is with the Tentacle Studio app. Unfortunately, it's Mac only, and if you don't own any Tentacle products, then you have to buy it but you get it free with every single tentacle device that you buy. The TC1 is completely compatible with the software and it effortlessly syncs up all of your footage as you can see in this sync map. It's, it's practical and that's what this video is. And then you just export it as an XML and then you've got a sequence where everything is synced. A really important feature of the Tentacle Sync Studio is when you are shooting at a higher base frame rate like 50p or 60p. So for example, if you set your tentacle sync unit to 25p, but you're recording in 50p, then the tentacle sync studio will automatically detect the difference and will recalculate it for the higher frame rate. The Windows app is pretty basic, unfortunately, and doesn't give you XMLs. I believe there are some alternatives, including an open source one that can do an XML, but I can't remember the name of it and I haven't used it, sorry. I've been using the tentacle syncs for more than two years now and I couldn't shoot without them anymore. I use them on so many cameras and they make my life so much easier. They don't just help you deal with multiple cameras, they help you get past limitations of many cameras. I often get asked the question, if you had to choose between X or Y, which would it be? That's a difficult question because look, you're really asking about you, not me. And what I value for my use may be very different to yours. That's why my reviews don't tell you to buy something. They're about giving you the information to make an informed choice. Both the Tentacle Sync and the Data TC1 are fantastic time code generators. And having clocks which are so accurate as these two is not a simple thing. Even cameras like the Arri Alexa don't have clocks which are as accurate as these. Of course, prices may well affect your decision. The cost may seem high to you, but if you compare them to what we used to pay for time code systems, they are way, way cheaper. You do need to factor in the additional cost of cables. It's a shame that data you don't let you choose the cables that it comes with. You in fact only get one 3.5 millimeter, the 3.5 millimeter TRS cable, which I would say is probably my most used one. They don't cost that much, mind you. But you're also getting cables, which a lot of you won't need. Each tentacle sync comes with a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter TRS cable. If you want the best software for syncing everything together, that is a Tentacle Sync Studio software, which is 149 euros. So take that into account as well if you are looking at getting the TC1s, because it is free with the Tentacle Sync products. So it definitely is worth buying more than one, and really, you are going to be needing more than one, especially if you listen to my advice and make sure you keep one on each camera at all times to avoid any drift. Yes, the price adds up, but they have really revolutionized my filming, but they aren't tied to any specific cameras, which means they are going to last you for years. Anyway, that's enough about time code. If any of you are still watching, hopefully some of you are. It's supposed to be a freeze frame, Harriet. <laughs>